In this video, I'm going to be unboxing and testing out some products from the October Mystery Box. This is the deluxe mystery box for the month of October. I do think the sticker for this month's box is super cute. Let's go ahead and open up the box. The first thing that you see when you open up the box is the stickers and confetti paper. I absolutely love getting these stickers with my mystery boxes. They're always super cute and they really do match the theme of each month's mystery box. So those are the stickers that I got in my mystery box. Let's go ahead and remove some of the confetti paper. The first thing I'm showing you here is kind of hard to see on camera, but they are white glow-in-the-dark nail stickers. They're very Halloween themed. I do really like those. The second pack of nail stickers are more Halloween themed ones. These are super cute. The next thing I got is a pack and this one has some dotting tools and also these swatches to swatch out those dip powder colors with. I do really love the fact that they include swatch sticks to swatch out your dip powder colors. And here are those dotting tools. These are really important when you do nail art. The next thing I'm unpackaging is the Rainbow Glitter Cat Eye Gel. These gel polishes are magnetic, so the glitter in the gel polish moves when you put a magnet over it. This is a really pretty shade of red. The next item I'm showing you is a package of their pigments. These, I do believe, they are the chrome pigments. These are really easy to apply and they give your nails a really beautiful nail effect. I will be using these later on in the video. This is what they look like and you just apply them with the eyeshadow applicators, which they did include some in this mystery box. The next thing I'm showing you is the magnetic stick. So one side of this is the one that pulls the glitter to the top and the other one pushes the glitter away. I think that is really nice. The next one is also another magnetic stick. This one has like different shapes. So you can do different designs in your magnetic gel polish with this tool. Here is the little bag that has the eyeshadow applicators for those pigments. I do think it's really nice that they included that in this mystery box. Ooh, I kind of missed a little sticker. I think this one is really cute. And the last thing in this mystery box is the three dip powder colors that you get. These are all half ounce jars and the first one is a mystery color and this is a custom mix dip powder for the mystery boxes. So that is everything that I got in my mystery box. Let's go ahead and swatch out the dip powders. The first dip powder I'm going to swatch is number 204 and this is called Jacko Lantern. This is a really vibrant orange color. The next one is number 171 and this is the mystery color that is custom mixed for the mystery boxes each month. This is a really beautiful orange type of glitter dip powder. And the last one is CP015 and this one is called Oogie Boogie. That's actually really funny because I am doing an Oogie Boogie nail design for this video. This color is a black dip powder and it does have different color glitter in it. So to swatch out the dip powder colors, I'm using the dip base, which is number two. This is just to adhere the dip powder to the swatch. I am also going to be swatching on the inside of the swatch stick to prevent having to file and shape after I've applied the dip powder. So I'm going to start by applying a thin layer of the dip base onto the inside of the swatch. Once I have that dip base applied, I'm then going to dip it into the dip powder at a 45 degree angle. I'm going to tap away all of the excess dip powder and that's the first layer of dip powder. I'm going to repeat the same step to swatch out the other two colors. Since this one is a chunky glitter, I am going to push the swatch down into the dip powder to allow those chunky glitters to adhere to the dip base. Using the Unicorn Fluffy Nail Brush, I am going to dust away all of the excess dip powder once that layer has dried. I'm then going to do a second layer of dip powder color on all of these swatches.
Here are the three dip powder swatches for this month's mystery box. I do really love all three of these dip powder colors. Onto the tutorial, I have already prepped my nails. I have the long coffin jelly tips on, which I have cut down some of the length. I do also have some new gel polish on as the base color for my nails, so I'm already ready for the nail art. I really wanted to try out these chrome pigments and I was really torn between two different colors for different nail designs. I did end up choosing this really, really beautiful green shade of pigment. I've never used a color like this one before so I was really interested to see how this one would look. I will also be using the black liner. This is from the Gel Art Liner Collection. As some of you may know, I'm absolutely obsessed with this nail product. It's definitely my go-to product for nail art. I'm going to make sure I don't have too much of the polish on the brush, and I'm going to go ahead and paint a French tip on my index nail. Hand painting a French tip nail is rather difficult to learn, but once you get the hang of it, it is very easy to do, especially with these gel art liners. The thin brush gives you a lot of precision and they are highly pigmented so you don't need to do multiple layers to get the color that you're going for. Once I have the right side painted, I'm going to go ahead and do the same thing on the other side of the nail. Personally, I do like to make the French tip a little bit thinner than I would want just so that I can go back and touch up my smile line to get it exactly how I want. This will prevent the French tip from being thicker than I would like. Some people do like to do the outline of the smile line first and then go ahead and fill the tip of the nail in. Personally, I just do it however I feel like that day. Either way, I do get great results when I hand paint my French tips. I'm also going to be hand painting a French tip on the pinky nail as well. I'm choosing to use black gel polish because personally I've heard that chrome pigments do show up a lot better on black gel polish rather than other colors, but you can also play around and use a different color for the base. Once I have those French tips, I'm going to cure for one minute. After those nails are cured, I'm going to open up my chrome pigment. I am using the eyeshadow applicator that the mystery box came with to apply my chrome pigment onto the nail. I'm just going to dip the tip of that directly into the chrome powder and I'm going to go ahead and massage that into the gel polish. I did not remove the sticky layer from the gel polish after it was cured, so that is what the chrome pigment is sticking to. So you do want to make sure not to remove any of the sticky layer before applying your chrome pigment. You do want to make sure to massage this product very well to make sure that the entire gel polish layer is covered. So after I have the index nail completed, I'm going to repeat the same step on my pinky nail. After the chrome pigment has been applied, I'm going to take a fluffy nail brush and gently dust away any of the excess powder. You don't want to be too rough, otherwise the pigment will come off. For the middle fingernail, I'm going back with my black gel art liner. I'm going to be outlining and filling in the Oogie Boogie costume that Stitch is wearing. I did want this to be the same color as the French tips, so I am going to do a black layer first and then once this layer is cured, I'm going to take that same green pigment and I'm going to massage it into this layer. This part was a little bit difficult, but I did not want to start with the center of the design because I didn't want to get any of that green pigment on Stitch's face or anything. So I did have to do this step first to prevent getting any of that pigment on anything other than the costume. So that is why I'm starting with this first. It is also really helpful if you look at a reference photo when trying to do nail art. This part here is just the hood of Stitch's costume, which on the hood is going to be the Oogie Boogie's face. So once I have that, I'm just going to go ahead and move down to the rest of the costume. I did try to leave myself as much space as I possibly could in the center of this design since I am going to be doing Stitch's face. 
I personally just don't really like to do designs from the outside in, kind of like I'm doing here, but that was honestly my only choice for doing this type of nail art since I was going to be applying the chrome pigment to the costume. So this was a little bit difficult for me, but I did end up making it work. Once I have that exactly like I want, I'm going to cure it under the nail lamp for one minute. After that layer is fully cured, I'm going back with the eyeshadow applicator and I'm going to be applying that same green chrome pigment powder onto the entire costume. I'm then going with the blue gel art liner and I'm applying a little bit of this onto a piece of paper so I can custom mix a color. I'm then taking a small drop of the black gel art liner and I'm just going to mix this in with the blue. I'm doing this to create a darker shade of blue gel polish. I'm then taking the blue that I mixed up and I'm going to fill in the entire area for Stitch's face. I'm also going to be drawing his hands coming out of the costume. I really didn't have as much space as I would like to fully do this design, so the hand I didn't really get to show as much as I wanted to, but I honestly couldn't do this design any smaller. I'm going to go ahead and give that layer a full cure. I then added some white gel polish to get a lighter shade of blue, and I'm going to be adding this onto the face. I'm using this color for the outline around the eyes. I'm also taking that color to outline the bottom of the face. I'm then going to cure that for one minute. After that layer is cured, I'm then going to mix up a little bit more of that dark blue with the black gel polish. This is going to give me a slightly darker shade of blue. I'm going to take that and apply this to the center of the face for Stitch's nose. I did cure that layer for one minute. Next, I'm going in with the black gel eyeliner again. I did kind of get out of frame for this part, but I'm only doing circles in the lighter areas of the blue for the eyes and also a small line at the mouth. I'm then taking the lighter pink gel polish, this is number one, and also the white gel polish and I'm going to mix that half and half to get a lighter shade of pink for the tongue. I'm going to be adding a small line of this directly under the black line that I previously created. I'm then going to cure that for one minute. Then taking the white gel art liner, I'm going to add some small dots for his teeth and also add some small highlights in his eyes. I'm then going to cure that under the nail lamp. Next, I'm going back with my black gel art liner. And I'm going to be adding the details to his costume. I'm just starting out by drawing Oogie Boogie's eyes. This part is a little bit difficult to see on camera, so I do apologize for that. I'm then going to go ahead and outline the entire costume. And for the final touches, I'm just going to be adding some rips to the costume. 
Once the costume has been outlined, I'm going to go ahead and cure for one minute. I actually had a different design in mind for my ring fingernail, but as I was continuing to do the design, I ended up not liking it. I did want to go ahead and include this footage in the video just so you can see what happened with this nail, but I do end up taking this off after I've cured this layer. For this design, I was going to do some words that were dripping goo, and the goo was going to be the chrome pigment but it ended up not looking good so that is why I ended up removing it. For the next step I'm taking the yellow gel art liner and I'm going to mix this with a little bit of the green gel art liner color. I did need a color that was in between these two colors so that is why I'm mixing the colors together. I'm going to be using this color to outline the French tip nails. For the outline, I do want it to be quite thin, so I am making sure that I don't have too much of the polish on the brush so that I can get a precision line. So here's the design that I was trying to do. I was trying to write the word boo and have drips coming down. I did add too many drips and I think that's why it turned out looking bad, but I ended up just filing that off. So I'm taking those white glow in the dark nail stickers and I'm going to be adding one onto the nail. Taking some tweezers, I'm just going to pick up the trick or treat glow in the dark nail sticker and I'm going to be applying this directly in the area that I messed up. Then I'm taking that same yellow and green gel polish color that I mixed up and I'm going to be drawing some drips around the cuticle area of the nail. Usually I do follow a different step to do my drips, but today I wanted to try drawing them a little bit differently. After I have those drips, I'm going to cure for one minute. I did spend the entire time trying to figure out what I wanted to do on the thumbnail. I did end up just doing another French tip nail. So I'm doing the exact same steps that I did for the other two French tips. I'm then going to take the No Wipe Gel Top Coat. This is from the Premium Jelly Liquid Starter Kit. I'm going to take that and apply this to all of the nails. When applying this over the chrome pigment, you do need to do a very light and quick stroke over top of the chrome pigment. This is going to prevent smearing the pigment across the nail. Once I have the top coat, I'm going to cure for one minute. After the nails are cured, I'm going to take the cuticle oil, this is number six, and I'm going to apply this to all of the cuticles. It is important to rehydrate your skin after each and every manicure. And here are the nails. I hope you guys enjoyed this tutorial. Let me know what you think down below in the comments. If you want to see more videos, you can click the boxes and subscribe to Double Dip's YouTube channel by clicking the circle here. You can also subscribe to my personal YouTube channel by clicking the circle here.